welcome back to the Gnostic Informant, and you are about to attain true Gnosis. Indeed. And we are in Israel. This is day two. Well, it's day one, technically, but we got here a day early, so it's day two for us. Yeah. The, uh, the actual tour, tour, like the actual real stuff starts tomorrow morning. Tabor just got here today. Me and Derek have been here for a day and some change. Yeah, and, uh, you know, been... we had to go see the concubines and the harlots down at the um, yeah. at Jericho. Yeah. Um, she, she was still there. You she know? was still, She's there still there all this time. Yeah, it She's was been pretty, sitting there. She's still, nice. still looking good too. I mean, still looking great. She has not lost her spunk. Right. You know? <laughs> Full of dust, but she still got that. You know, she still got what it takes to shake. You know. Yeah, well, we just wanted to go live and try this out. Check this out because we're on Wi-Fi right now. Yeah, we're not plugged into anything right now. We're just doing this just for fun. Just you know, we're just shooting the shit with everybody, just having a conversation. We, but the the thumbnail was not clickbait. We didn't no. need somebody yes. interesting. Yes, yes, we did. It wasn't just the harlot that saved um, the Israelites that were in Jericho. Um, we didn't just meet her. Um, we met someone that uh, is a pretty well-known figure. In fact, we didn't expect to meet. Am I too loud? Am I coming in No, too you sound, sound great. Okay, make it Why sure. Why is someone saying okay. No, no, no. Just making sure the it, We found the historical Lazarus, and he's risen. He's back. Yeah, yeah. No, just yeah, kidding. That, was, yeah, that wasn't important. That's yeah. not even that significant, right? I mean, it's just a resurrected guy. Um, but what we did find is – I'll say the first name. You say the second. Yeah. All right. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> Jacoby? It's just Sim- uh, no, Simka. Sim- no, you just, you just faked me out, dude. No, it's Simka. Simka Jacob- Jacob- Jacobici. Jacobici. Yeah. Jacobavinci. Yeah. He came and to see the us Naked here. archaeologist is here. Yeah. And uh, I was like, this is, cr- this is perfect now. This is perfect. Because you come here. We're coming here. We're doing what he does on his show. Yep. I grew up watching his show. I live in Buffalo. And we get Canadian channels there. The Naked Archaeologist would come on and... I would see Steve Mason and James Tabor and uh, and and Simca, and they're doing what me and Derek do on our channels, yeah. but like they're out in the field here in Israel, like digging up stuff and going here, going there, and we're coming in here to do exactly what he's doing. You know, and sure enough, we see him here. Yeah, it's yeah. ironic. I was like, what the? Now he's spending time with uh, Dr. Tabor, and they're hanging out, and uh, I figured we'd let people know, like right here where we're at in this hotel, we opened the window so you could see. Out here, the literally right behind us, behind this building that's behind us here, um, is the Mediterranean Sea. Right. And uh, I just did yo, just just I just, I chatted from my phone. Yeah, I'm just I'm just. If uh, we get booted, everybody. just so everybody knows, if we get booted, it's because we're on Wi-Fi at a hotel that we're not so sure how the internet is. Yeah, it looks like it's going good so far. Yeah. So, Are we coming through crystal clear? Because I know that sometimes StreamYard can be deceiving. Yeah, let us know. Oh, wow. Looks good. Yeah, coming through red, though. You know what it is now? Yeah, like, a little bit of a red hue, but it's okay. That's because of the Satan in us. Yeah. Satan? I mean, we're kind of a wicked people. You know, you can't help it. Yeah. I mean, look, there's so much that's going on that's different about where we're at. Yeah. But uh, it, 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 the Mediterranean Sea is right here. In fact, we're at the port, and you're going to see the videos, of course, that we've already recorded. I already went in the water and walked out to the... There's like this big rock harbor yeah, thing. Yeah. And I walked out there and got some, got some, uh, some, I don't, I'm not a vlogger. I mean, obviously, you guys know I'm not a vlogger. I just do like interviews and videos, but I'm making a vlog, I'm making a whole for the vlog for the whole trip. Yeah. So that should be kind of fun to do. I'll do some, I'll do some voiceovers and add some visuals and talk about stories about stuff. That's, that's one of the videos I'm making. But there's going to be a lot of stuff that Tabor is going to help us with that he's going to be showing us. And we're going to film it, and we're going to have multiple angles, multiple. Yeah. And it was about, I don't know, 200 feet out on the sea and didn't even go beneath the water. I was I was literally watching, and I was like, let me get my camera out. And there's Neil just walking on water. Right I there did on it. The sea. And I thought. All you need is faith, and it works. I, this whole time, all you know, who would have known? If who would have known? only listened to the fundamentalist. Yeah, but you, you know. You just, those, you just believe you can walk on water, and it works. The rationalists were just. What were they thinking to try to know. rationalize something like that? It's just you know you know what it is. They know it. They just want to keep the secret for themselves. Yeah, they're they're stingy with it. They know that it's real. Yeah. Well, we don't want to tell them about our anti gravity. That's true. Um, that's true. Technology. Don't, don't tell have. them yet. Don't tell yeah. them. Yet. Yeah. Yeah. Don't let everybody know that either. That's, just, that's just a fact. Between us. Yeah. Um. 
but yeah, we're here at the Mediterranean Sea, and in fact, the Crusaders. This is the port where the Crusaders came in to fight the Muslims yeah. uh, for the Holy Land back. So yeah, it's real, right? Where we're at, this is where it went down. Um, in like the 12th century, like they came in here and they had their their cavalry or their uh, what is it called the uh, the the vet, those vests and. The Can you imagine and... them wearing all that just just metal, all that yeah. metal just getting off? Yeah. yeah. Get the Holy Land. Yeah. Come on, let's drink the Kool Aid. I was watching a documentary about the Crusades, and like they came here, they swept through, they did a, it was a nice first Crusade. They did their thing, and then they took Jerusalem, and then they just sat there and were like, "Oh, now what? Now we have to hold it." Mm. Like. Uh, yeah, they, and like within a few months, they were like, have to "Live in this crab hole." Yeah, and they the got time. they got they got booted right out. Muslims came back, took their shit back. At like, the time, get man, out of here. Now it's modern. I mean, like right. this is really nice. Everything out here is pretty decent. I'm not going to say there isn't some places, but you get the same thing in Boston or New York or any other city. Uh, where we're at, we're at Natanya. So for anybody who they're partying know, all night in the in the little tiny town square. What do you call? That's like a town square. Yeah, or something. there's still people it's out like, there. It's like equivalent to what you would call a town square. It was like a huge opening. Oh wow! And um, they're all partying. They had the you grab it. Oh, it's good. Okay. They had the music playing. There was Elvis. There was uh, I don't know. There was like so they have a big other... screen up out yeah. there, multiple screens, and kids are out there dancing. Literally, let's do the whip, whip. Do it, nay, nay. Nah. I mean, and everybody's speaking Hebrew mostly here. Yeah. So it's very. They're looking at me and Neil and Ryan, my wife. They're like looking at us, like, oh, these people are definitely not from here. Is this someone we're with, Dr. Cheryl Lal? Do what? Yeah. Oh yeah. No, that... no, no, no. I don't. I don't think... No, 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 no. Okay, because I just met like twenty people today that I don't remember. Like I'll, I'll like, I know remember the face right yeah, now. Yeah. Yeah. But I've, I've, it'll take me a day or two to get the to get the names right. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Cheryl's always in the chat. And yeah. No, we have met a few people already here who know us, and we're like, oh yeah. my gosh, yeah, your yeah. work is There's amazing. There's a couple people that came up to work. us, and we're, they're with us on the real the whole time, but they know us from our channels. They just which came is kind of cool this afternoon for the tour. Tomorrow we're taking off for the Galilee, right? Aren't we going up there toward yes. the Galilee? Yeah. So we're going to be starting up there. off big. We're going in the, isn't it the Sea of Galilee or Tiberias or what is it? Lake of Tiberias, Lake Tiberias, Sea of Galilee. And we're going on a boat in the water to film. Yeah. That'll be in the next few. That'll be the, that'll be pretty cool. Yeah. So I just want to make sure everyone knows this. All of the best content won't be released this week. It's all going to be edited yeah, that's for all later. After stuff. Because we're going to pre-record it, edit it, make it perfect, and then put it up. Yeah. The, the only stuff you're going to see from us for the next 10 days is like lives maybe like this. Maybe this or like maybe just shorts. Like, yeah. Just, and yeah, short videos like that I can upload real quickly without any pro problems. No, um, I know that. Uh, we'll I, actually, have... I actually have one that's almost ready for tomorrow. I'll put that up tomorrow. That'll be cool. Yeah. I know yeah. that we'll have some really good stuff edited and put up on the Patreon. Right. That's what I'm saying. And then early in November, we're going to have some fire content, like documentary style videos. Yeah. yeah like yeah. little mini documentaries, seriously. Oh, yeah, for sure. Maybe even with one long one at the end, too. Like, I, mean, I, might, I might put we, together one long like one with everything, with with everything in it. Yeah. yeah. Just to have that on there. Wow. That's going to be crazy. Like, we're not missing, we're not, there's no stones being unturned. Like we're going to all the spots. Oh, all from the, the north to the south, from 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 the Galilee to Masada, mm -hmm. everywhere we're hitting all the spots, all the way in between Jerusalem, all that Dead Sea, all that. Qumran. Going down through the tunnel, we're going to go through Hezekiah's tunnel. We're gonna. It's gonna be good. Lots of good content. Yeah, yeah. we got James Tabor, so we're in good hands. Oh yeah, and he just got in, so we haven't even started. Can you imagine if if Simca was actually coming with us the whole time? That would be dope. That would just be, would be we dope. would just be filming naked archaeologists like four point oh. Like, come on, man, let's do it. Come on. Yeah, man. yeah, we did. I get a. Sh I got Kip a shot. Kip knows him. Kip, him. Kip yeah. did it. Yeah. Did, was in his in, in his episode. I know. I saw that on that. Uh, we did get a quick shot with him before you left, though. So people, will get yeah, to see we that. got a nice heart heartfelt video from him. He had he he said some crazy stuff. What did he say to you? You were in it. You had oh, the mic he, up. He pretty him. much was like, um, "We're witnessing a modern, huh?" Well, don't don't give it all away. Yeah, but, but then why would we want to say it? <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess you're right. I guess you're right. Yeah, you know what? That's a good point. 
We're not going to tell you what he said, but it was it came from hanging. the heart. It came from the heart. He gave he he gave us uh how he feels about all this whole you know the situation that we're doing, everything we're doing, mm-hmm. everything because he's been doing this forever and has just made a career off of what we're doing right now. And so he was, you could tell he was like, this is a a good time, and you'll see, you'll see. I'll leave yes. you. I'll leave you with that. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I I definitely plan on bringing up a bunch of good content back. We're going to edit and work on it and stuff. Anyone got any questions? I'm just making sure there's any questions. Oh, from I'm from Israel. So how was it for you in Israel? Hope you got, just enjoy. So far, it's been amazing. The weather's really nice. The beautiful beach. People are awesome. The yeah. people are really are awesome here. They're all really nice. The driver, when we came in, how oh funny was that? Tell them a the story about this driver. This driver was so funny. He picked us up from the airport, and he's just he's just funny. I don't know. I mean, I, this guy was driving like a lunatic. Yeah, but he was. Yeah, honestly, he was. He like was. this guy he kept was, going on his phone to look at. He his, video he was, called he was, his uh, kids. He was. He was. Uh, super, what do you call it? Yeah, video chat. Yeah, video chatting his daughter, his like two year old daughter, while he's driving. But we were trying to talk to him too, and he was like, he he was like, if you want to rent the car. All you need is a thank you. Yeah, he We're didn't like, know what? how to translate, so you could tell. His I think first... he meant license, but he said thank you. So right. he said, if you want to rent a car, you need a. They said thank you. And yeah. Me and Derek are like looking at each other, like a thank you. I would just say thank you. I get a car. Okay, where do I sign up? Let's go. And, and, and then he tried to emphasize it. Like, he, yeah, you know, like he said Google. Like, Google oh, thank you. He goes. You know? He goes. Uh, Google Translate. Google Translate. Like okay. You hand him your but phone. But he literally almost wrecked. Cops are driving right next to him. No, he was him. driving fine. It just was kind of it was kind of annoying to see him on the phone, though. That but the like, cops that are driving right next to him with the lights on and stuff, and I'm like thinking, dude, get off the phone. He you didn't know, care. Like, he didn't care. He's video calling his two or three year old who's got a pacifier. It didn't mouth phase the him. The cop, the cop drove right past us. It didn't phase him. It was wild. Yeah. It was funny. <laughs> Inquisitive. Has a prophet that appeared with the Sar- Saracens turned up yet? <laughs> Yeah. Not yet, not yet. But I think the driver might have been a Muslim. Have you been to the Israel Museum in Jerusalem? There are Qumran scrolls. We oh, haven't yeah. been to Jerusalem. Yet. Are we going? That's one I of don't, the spots. I think that one's still closed down from oh. COVID. I think it may not be that one. It may be that one. I don't know. We'll be able to find out when we get there. That's the one where uh, they said they're all fake scrolls. The ones on display. I don't know. Someone told me that. Someone was, I forgot who. I think it might have been Kip. Actually, it might be worth. The, ones, reaching in, the out. ones that are in there are just for display and they're fake. Yeah. Because they're like, I don't know. I don't know. But I could be wrong. Maybe maybe I'm wrong. Maybe pulling out a six-pack of beer in the second he hit hit the highway. I'm not kidding. Like, that's how it made – I was like, okay, this is like when I lived in, in Puerto Rico, right? The way that the drivers are in the air is crazy. And then when I was in Kuwait, when I was getting a taxi from the base downtown Kuwait, Third world country driving. Like I'm talking about you, you're looking at your GPS and you know it says like half a mile, you gotta take this turn. And like he's getting into the far left lane and it's like half a mile away. And then the very last minute he's crossing three or four just to get over into the and like he's comfortable with just going like I don't I don't even know. Wow. It's super, super wild. Like you get pulled over in a heartbeat where we live, you know? Yeah. Crazy. So let me think. What else we got going on? Tomorrow. What's the first thing we do tomorrow? I, we're taking off from here. I think we're headed up to Galilee. I think. But are we leaving the hotel tomorrow? I don't know. Or are we staying here for one I more day? I need to ask James. Yeah. That's a good question. Yeah, because I think we're here for one more day in this spot. Let me text him. Yeah. But, yeah, James Tabor is going to be – he's – uh. He's gonna he's gonna be the star of the show. That's basically what it's gonna be. But Derek and I will be jumping in for asking to be able to ask questions and you know maybe just like guide the uh, guide some some uh, conversation. Yeah, guide some conversation. We'll dig, we'll dig deeper into some yeah. stuff. And I know that James wants to put a course together for this whole tour, right. like a like a walking you know in the ancient path. Tour. Let's do it, but on camera. So yeah, we might, we might be able to make it happen through with this footage. Oh yeah, we will. We will. I'm asking him now. I asked if we were leaving the hotel in the morning, but I don't know. Why would anyone trust a channel with the word informant in it? It's a good question. Who knows? 
You know, maybe you just found out. Maybe you Listen, just the, exposed the, the it. name Gnostic informant. Think about it. A, someone who was a Gnostic who became an informant and started telling on himself because I found out that there were some there were some uh, some issues and. You know, I told them, I, I, I'm, it's like speaking a snitch on your old past, basically. Yeah. Because I was, you know, I was a believer you for a long like, time. You were like, look, let's lay the cards out on the table. You were turning Gnostic, really. Yeah. No, I still, I still love Gnosticism as a historical uh, phenomenon. Same with me. With I love Christianity it. and all of this yeah. stuff, like learning all like, of this Like, I don't stuff. have any problems with it. I'm not trying to, like, attack it or anything. But I'm not, I don't believe it, though. I don't believe it anymore. So I be that's why that's the that's what the name that's what the name really means. Right. You know. I mean, at the end of the day, I think when you met me, there was more like a you started to kind of critical critically analyze the the stuff that you were starting to look into. I don't know. Yeah. Is that what happened? Oh yeah, your channel. Let me think. Your channel. Um. Who else? I started watching your channel and Cosmic Skeptic. Um. Genetic, genetically modified skeptic. Uh, what's the what's your friend? Uh, what the hell's his name? Holy Kool Aid. Uh, I didn't, or, that's another one too. Um, um, Rationality rules. Yeah, Stephen. I started watching channels like that, and I'm just like, these are these guys are putting down like irrefutable stuff. Like, you know what I mean? There's like a lot of good stuff. Yeah. And there's other channels too, like Aaron Ra, and of, of course Dilla Hunty. You know what? In fact, Dilla Hunty. I remember watching Dilla Hunty debate. Jordan Peterson back when I was a big Jordan Peterson fan. And I was ready for Jordan Peterson to, to give it to the atheists. Let's go. And uh, Jordan Peterson was like, or Matt Dillahunty was like, How do you, what do you have that, what, what evidence do you have that there's a God? Jordan Peterson was like, well, you know, uh, psychedelics. Well, they give psychedelics to people. And you know all about some psychedelics. And they, yeah, and, he was, and, they, and they quit cigarettes just like that. And that's proof of God. Dillahunty just goes, huh? And I just remember being like, damn, man. Maybe. It was kind of weird. How that was like one of those moments that like made me go, oh, wait a minute. Am I, am I on the right side yeah. of, of the truth here? Yeah, that was a weird response to me that like coupled with. Because he's um, supposed to be the guy. He's supposed to be leading the torch of like the the The, the God. smartest theistic yeah, side. Yeah, the theist side, right. right. And like. Instead, he's like mushrooms. Just the other day, he was, he, he, you know, um, the guy. uh the Muslim apologist, the uh, the big stocky guy who's so he's getting it in with apostate prophet, or he's arguing. Oh, uh, crazy dude! I uh, can't remember his name right now. He's he's at, honestly uh, at that job. Yeah, uh, what's his name? Oh, but he he was uh, Muhammad Hijab. A, Muhammad Hijab. He was doing a video with Jordan Peterson a few days ago, talking about God and stuff. Oh, that was a, that that's was how old you one. know that's how. Not, oh, is it? Yeah, that was old. Okay, yeah, but that's still it's about a half a year ago. Oh, sure. okay, yeah, but still, that's like let's just show you how far away. Jordan Peterson is not as far as like disguise yourselves and go inside the dome of the rock. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Can you imagine trying to do that? Just put on some rags and just... Yeah. I don't know. I don't think I I might be able to get away with it. I might be able to do it. Yeah. Uh, but uh that would be funny. But no, that, that's a good that's a good um that's a good point because that is such a that that location, the the energy is gonna be so up hot, like it's just gonna be so tight. It, there's a tense it's, feeling. It's tight, well, even tense. the Jews among the Jews at the welling, yeah. the, the the what is it, the welling wall? Yeah, there's a tense. They're tense there because they're trying to cut each other to get in the line to be on the wall. Like if it's if it's busy, if it's not that busy, then it's right. not that bad. But um, we'll find out when we get there. I'm recording on the spot. I don't care. Yeah, I'm recording. Um, the place. But that's a, that, that's that's such a major area just because of the tensity of it. right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's going to be interesting to see that. Absolutely, and it's just so it's such an iconic thing too. Appreciate thank that thank you for that chat. super chat, inquisitive mind. I always yeah. lo always love seeing you in the chat. Don't worry. I'll, also, hi Mel Melody Joy. Good word for you. What's going on, Melody? In heaven. What are you up to? Thanks for coming. And James Apperson. What's going on, hey, everybody? <laughs> the naked archaeologist. Yeah, we met him today. Yeah. He's in this hotel right now. He's yeah. downstairs. He's, he's, he's with Tabor right now. They're having a. They're just. They're having a few they're, drinks. They're like good friends. For, they've been friends for like probably as long as we've been alive, probably. Oh, yeah. So they're having a, a chat. You know, we and, were going to record with them, but they got to catch up. So, yeah, they're catching up on, on stuff. So, you know. Figure out how they're going to take over the world, that kind of thing. Yeah. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. 
where there is a new video of JP with that guy. Indeed. Nice. Can you go to Mount Gerizim or Shiloh and discuss the Judaic schism that led to that? Well, I don't think we're going there. Uh, that's a little bit further north in the Galilee, I think. Is it really? I think so. The, the Gerizim is up in Samaria in the region in the north. And But we are going to be in Samaria because we're going to that. That's huh? that's where that one. Samaria. I is... don't know if we're going that far north. Okay, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm thinking of something else. It's a, I mean, it's north of the Galilee, but not. I don't know how much further north. But Yeah, I don't think you're right. Maybe you're right. Maybe there is no Samaria at all. I do have a Abud uh, Cohen, who's the grandson of the high priest, the, the leading high priest of all the Samaritans in the world right now. Oh, you had him on, right? I've had him on, but yeah. he's also invited me if we ever decided we wanted to go to Gerizim on the mountain. Maybe really? go for like a holiday season or something and, and check out what they got or something. How far away is that from where we're going tomorrow? I don't know. We'll have to look at a map. Yeah. But you never know. There was some things so things always change it just like that, you know. Yeah. There's Ariel. Ariel's Gary Seam is in the West Bank. Okay. okay. So yeah, that's that's why we're that's, yeah, that that's would not the outside of the that's not Israel, yeah. 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 I mean it's Israel's region, but it's not like territory. Right, right. That's why. If it's not the Israel territory, then it's not part of the trip. Because you can't just go there. You can't just like you okay. know. So by the way, Ariel, uh, you know, it's uh, you know, I've been thinking about you because you know I know how you're, you always love talking about coming here and stuff. So it's interesting. Yeah, I don't know, I, I don't know exactly where we're going, but I know we're going somewhere. Joel Pearson came a little bit late. We already told him or who we're meeting. No, we haven't, and we are going to meet him. We are seeing him, but that's not who we're talking about. I think Tuesday. Um, but, we're supposed to see him Tuesday night, yeah. our time. But the person we said we, we met was the naked archaeologist, uh, yeah. Simka, Simka. Jakubovinci. Yeah, he's in the hotel right Very now. Very famous if you're Canadian. If you're Canadian, you know who he is. If you're, but yeah, his, his show was like primetime Canada. But it, it was on for like 10 years. It was yeah. a big deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like all the big academics were on there. You know what I should do? You should do this. I should run downstairs with my, with my phone, jump into the stream yard, and just go and like, Give people a sneak peek shot with the phone. How do you do that? I'll, I'm, I'm on Wi-Fi. Oh, I can add I'm you. into the stream. Go right? ahead. I'll keep him busy. I'll keep him. So okay. I need the link. You got to message it to okay. me real quick. Okay. That way. This is going to be, this is, Derek has thought of a brilliant idea. There's a hundred people watching. Derek's going to go down and see Simca, the naked archaeologist, and James Tabor. Yep. In this stream right now. You're about to see them. That was a good idea. Yeah, I figured I, why not? I, I, yeah, you're so smart, dude. After this, you know, all right. So I just gotta. Going? What do I gotta do? I gotta Facebook to you. Yeah, go to Facebook okay. Messenger. Facebook. And I'll jump in. You gotta add me into the. Just be patient, here. guys, for one minute. It won't be long. If you're interested. Why right. not? Why not? Yeah, that's legendary stuff right there. How, how often do you get to see Simcon on, on a stream? Well, in person too. It's like, excuse me. All right, I just gave you the link. Okay. Bam. Make sure you got it. You got it? I got it. I'm jumping in. It's going to I'm it's going to blank me out when I get in the elevator. Actually, okay. I'm trying to go down the steps. All Maybe. right. I'm just going to look at questions while you're down there. It says Jesus visit Is it Jesus? <laughs> Are y'all going Let me see what you got here, Ariel. Are y'all going to Panias at Mount Hermon? Mount Hermon is the one of the ones. Yeah, Mount Hermon's on the list. So yes, and if so, are y'all going to make content on fallen angels and the mountain of the oath? The angels take. We we're just talking about angelology. That's a big possibility. It's a big possibility. We are going to Mount Hermon, which is going to be wild. To we're, go, we're climbing up a, a few mountains. There's a few mountains we're going to, and one of them is Masada. Did you edit? I'm getting there now. Oh, I don't see you on the bottom. That should be there. Yeah, midnight. Oh, oh wow. Midnight. The queen of myth vision is on the bed. All right. Can you hear me through this? Or... Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. It's actually pretty loud. I'll be back. Get to the chopper. Okay. Here we go. Is there an echo? Do you guys hear an Let echo? Let me see. Turning up volume. Hold up. Okay. 
is the t- is it in the territory of Israel? Samira is Israel. No, we were talking about the Palestine, the West Bank. We were talking. Neil, about. I can't hear you through this. That's the only problem. Let me try and fix that real quick. Oh yeah, that's that sucks. Yeah, you gotta fix that. Oh, use Facebook. Use Facebook. There you go. There you go. I'm using it. Okay. I got Sorry. it. All right. I'm going downstairs. There we go. Yeah, you're right. It did glitch out. Went up the stairs. Turned into salt. <laughs> yeah, that's true. The story. That's a historical story. I don't think it's. I don't. Yeah, I think we. Yeah, that's a historical story. Definitely. In fact, have you ever heard that they actually found a stone that they thought was actually her, and they like claimed that this was the stone that was uh, Lot's wife. That's so ridiculous. That's so ridiculous. I've heard people actually still think that, too. Ridiculous. You're breaking up, Derek. Yeah, you look like a slideshow right now. Can you hear me? Oh, now you're coming back. Now you're coming back. Yeah, you're starting to come back now. Dude, it's empty now. Oh, they left? They left. Yeah, they might be done. It's late now. Well, is they, late? they just flew in. I guarantee you they're so tired, bro. Maybe they went up to the seventh floor. Yeah. I don't know. He said he's on. Huh? You want to give, give it one more shot to see if they're up there and that's it? We'll... we'll, uh, we'll. Sure, sure. All right. I'm going in the elevator. Bear with me. Yeah, I saw this. I saw this. I saw the picture of the of the lot of the salt thing, and I remember. So I remember thinking like, it actually has a human shape, which is funny because like obviously they're gonna be like, "There's the one we found it," but it's just so dumb. Like, there's no like, like you can't like DNA it or anything, obviously. But the, their rebuttal to that would be, well, he God turned her into salt, so she's salt now. So why would she have DNA? It's like, oh, okay, fair, okay, fair enough. You got that. Like miracles, I get it. Mir- anytime you can't answer, any, anytime you don't have an answer for something, it's just it's a miracle. You know, God does what He wants. So just that's it. It's like, okay, all right, fair enough. Huh. It's giant, though, isn't it? I don't know. I haven't been up to it. I saw a picture, but I can't really compare it to anything else. Can you hear me? Show the pool, someone said. I'm about to go up. Yeah, he's going where the pool is. I don't know if it's blocked off still. Vaguely agnostic said they had big women back then. (laughs) That's funny. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I can't. See, you're. Oh, now it just kicked back in. It's no dark. Up there? Here we go. See if I can turn my camera around. There we go. Oh, nice. There it is. Should go in there. Right? Whoa, Derek just jumped in the pool. I'm just kidding. And then just, here, just, just I'm gonna show I just everybody. Told Ryan that he jumped in. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Don't freak <laughs> her out. So you. look, here's the view. Right there's the sea behind us lights. That's, That's literally the right Sea there. of Galilee. And here's the view. Here's yeah. another it's lit up too, yeah. No, that's not what he did. Oh shit! Oh, oh, Derek, who's that girl right there? Derek, why you, why'd you mute your mic? <laughs> She's on the way. Ryan's on the way. I'm just kidding. Uh oh, someone's getting hurt. Yeah. She's not playing around. 
Walk on the pool, Derek. Remember, you know how to walk on water now. I got to save some of those powers. <laughs> I have to save the power. Oh, we got a super chat. Super chat. Kensington, Cisco. Why is there no archaeological proof, zero, of anything in the Old Testament in Israel? Um, what? I don't know. Is there... What about... Oh, hey, what about this? What about the city of Ur? There's... You're breaking up. I'm coming. You got the key? You got the key? You need me to open the door. You might need to open. Hold on, let me see. I got a key. I just got a key. Yeah, let's go back to your question, Kazakh and Cisco. Um, let's think. You got the city of Ur has been dug up. Uh, I'm trying to think what else from the old. I mean... A lot of the locations, like Nineveh, Nineveh is a real city. Well, there is verifiable archaeological stuff. Hold on. Yeah, I mean, this is a. I, I get your point. There's a that a lot of it. There's a lot of stuff that's not. I wouldn't say zero of anything. Yeah. But I would say yeah. There's a lot of stuff in there that just. By the seems... way, they can hear you all the way down the hall. Really? That loud. Yep. Oh wow! I have a booming voice down. Huh? <laughs> Dude, you're like I hear you. It sounds like you're Did yelling. You really? I'm dead. Serious. It wasn't just okay. I'll try to keep it down. Um, but yeah, why no? Well, that's not the case. So a lot of things like um, even um, when we're when we're talking about um, Israel uh, uh, Finkelstein, he's fact checking things based on dates like seventh century, sixth century. So there is validation or verification of certain things archaeologically. The problem is is the dating. So when you're looking at something and let's say the claim is this happened in the 13th century under Moses. And they're like, hold on, what? The, that doesn't make any sense because the only time that city was even active archaeologically, the first time ever is in like the 7th century. Right. Which means you're 500 years apart from when the things actually happen based on the archaeology. And the claim that the Bible says back then Moses did it here or David or Joshua went on the conquest here. And this is what archaeology helps actually invalidate oftentimes the claims of the biblical text. So if there was zero archaeological evidence, then there'd be nothing to be able to debunk about the Bible because then it's unfalsifiable. It would just be, oh, can you just give me evidence, God, don't you just. No, it's there. Well, yeah. someone like uh, um, Robert Price used to say, uh, did God's angels come and vacuum up all of the <laughs> evidence? Uh, you know, yeah. come down there with vacuum cleaners and clean it all up. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, what was I going to say? I forgot. But, um, yeah, I, I'd say what it is, is you have a, a nation state that's, that's taking mythology from around them, mm. not just right there, but like, you know, they're looking at Sumer, they're looking at Hittites, they're looking at Egypt, but they're, they need their own personal nationalized history mythology. Mm. And that's what, that's how you get it's not just in Israel. It's everywhere. Everywhere does that. Yeah. The, the the island of Crete has their own the Minotaur Minotaur uh, myth. And all it's that. so funny because when we first found out that there's this is mythology, a lot of it's just stories that are right. kind of invented as foundational myths or whatever. And maybe a little little kernel there somewhere be. because there might be. the idea comes from somewhere. Yeah, some some yeah. of them might be, but not just like be. coming up with things just out of vacuum. Well, some of it might be borrowing from, from other places places right. that conquered them. Yeah. But at the end of the day. When I said this stuff to even like some of the scholars who might be believers or be theists, and I'll like say, so is it mythology? And they're like, yeah. And then, uh, and they're like, everyone does it. Some, All of some the like do Dom it. Dominic All Cross and, or um, Dale C. Ellison, I don't even consider them like, I would never, first of all, I would never call them apologists. No. They're not apologists. They are believers, but they're, they're so honest with their work. They're like, yeah, there's that I problems. Can trust, I can trust them. Well, I'm going to put it this way. I don't trust anyone wholesale. No, on like no, no. I don't just follow one person. I will look at everybody. But I, I, but I'll say this. I like that you said that they're not apologists. At the same time, I think you can see bias come in when there's certain explanations that might be met. But everyone has them. So like Dominic Cross, and I said this earlier to the guy at dinner who was like, John Dominic Cross, and I loved his work, this, this, that. And I was like, absolutely. I just think he sometimes is trying to reconcile the Bible yeah. with modern We evolution. all have biases. Yeah, yeah. I get caught up, and I'm always trying to find mystery cult stuff. Yeah. That's my bias. 
And I, I'll, I've admitted it a few times. I was talking to Litwa. I'm like, Dr. Litwa, Isn't I can't help it. A... But when I look at Addis, I look at Addis and Donis and Dionysus, I see so much Jesus in them because I'm, obviously they come before it. But I'm like looking back because I'm, I'm, I was a Christian. Right, right, so I right, see right, Christianity right. in front of them always. Mm-hmm. And when I, when I look at the day of blood on March 25th, followed by the day of washing on March 27th, three days. <gasps> right. And I'm like, so I get this parallel mania thing going. That's my bias. Yeah. We all have a bias. Yeah. We're, it's hard. We're it's, it's, the, the key is to try to not like let that be your driving factor for everything. Right. I think it's good to factor in these ideas and say there might be something there. Um, right. But, but yeah, I, I love listening to them because they, when they, when I say something that excites me, like, isn't this mythology, you know? And cause I figured it is. And then they're like, yeah. And they're right. not impressed or not excited. And they're like, everyone did that Greek, every right. single country that had any salt to it. Everybody had has to. foundation myth that is invented. That is not historically reliably true in any way, shape or form. So like, they look at it and it's like I'm bringing them a tablespoon of dookie from from literally the bowels of fundamentalism and then trying to go up to them and go, yeah? And they're like, hell no. What? No. What is that on the spoon? Get that out of here. You know, like <laughs> That was a good analogy. I actually. mean, it really is because they're like literal historical atom. Right. Like you literally buy this literally his, like what? And that's why someone like William Lane Craig gets more criticism for when he says the once in a while, he'll say some the right thing. It's because he's so <laughs> he's always bullshitting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then once in a while, he'll throw in like a hey, dude, well, you, maybe you there wasn't an Adam and Eve. Right. So when he says something that may not be shit on yeah. a spoon, like everyone around him, they're like, "Hold on, why aren't you still feeding me shit on a spoon?" Right. Like, all all his fundamentalist fr- uh, followers are like, "Come on, why did you say are that?" Are you kidding yeah. me? No, I know what Dookie smells like. Yeah. All right, I keep using the analogy. I know. Is anyone getting used to it yet? Or <laughs> <laughs> it's an acquired taste, apparently. Uh yeah. oh, what happened? Are we We're lost glitching. it. We lost it. Are you sure? Some people, some people. No audio. Did you lose your audio? Test, 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 test. No. No, you're still there. All right, can you hear us? I can hear it in my reboot video. No problem. Audio here. is still good to me. Oh, maybe this person just hasn't muted. Check and see if you're muted. And am I connected? No yeah. problems here. Okay. Re- reload the video to fix it. You're good here. Okay, all right, okay. I guess we're good. But um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, we'll see. But you know what I was just thinking about? Israel Fengelstein is such a good scout. Yeah. That is one that good scout. That book? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Like, I thought about going in because it's so long and it's very complex. And just trying to find out every site that... He's placing the seventh. Oh, my audio just kicked out for a second. So that's why. Oh, maybe it's just getting low. No, it's halfway. So is it yours or mine? Just have it for a quick second. Okay. And that went back. Is it good now? Yeah. It's good. All right. Was it my audio it or cord? both? Maybe it's the cord. We it's fine. It's it. fine, though. It's fine. Um, so, yeah, he, um, he, like, he'll say, like, hey, we, we know that this is a seventh century issue, and we have historical records that, like, attest to it. With no archaeological layers before that, things like that. What's wrong? It's happening again. It's clicking it, it on. It can't and out. be this. It's got to be. I mean, try yeah. something. Bear with us. Test, 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 test. I think we're on now. We're good. Good. It was just like, was that just me, guys, or was it clicking? It was clicking, right? Let me just set it in one spot. Oh, you test, get test. Fine. Okay. But like right. every time he says something in his book that he's like, dude, we it's some sites are contested. Like he admits like, OK, we have evidence of something that happened earlier. Some sites like someone brought up earlier. Uh, what was it? I the city of I AI. Um, they they had like way before the time that Joshua's conquest supposedly happened. They already had a destruction of the city take place. But in some of these places, there was no activities in the locations till the seventh century. First time in history, and it's not just history, historical record attests to this, archaeological layers. There's nothing before the 7th century in any layer in that region. So why is the Bible saying that this happened in the 13th century BC, right? When, which is the 1200s, when it really didn't happen until the 7th? So, like, why? Whoever's writing these stories is probably writing them as the book pretty much shows you. 
at least by the seventh century or later. It's like Daniel. It talks about Babylon as if he's some guy who lives in Babylon, but really we would say it's second century BC authorship, or at least it's final form where it has these predictions. Right. So, yeah, that's a good point. And a lot of this, so, and you know what else I just thought about while you were saying that mm -hmm. when I was, you know, going to church and be, as you know, I was going with the whole, you know, being a believer, I guess, you know, I thought that these stories are being written as they're being portrayed. Mm -hmm. Like I actually believe like yeah. Moses wrote this in 1200 BC. Right. And King David has right, was writing Psalms in 982 BC. And like, then I, when I found out that the manuscript meant evidence is like, all in like the common era, we don't have we don't have we don't have manuscripts in the BCs, right. none, zero, zilch. I'm like okay, but still, okay, but like we don't. It doesn't mean they're written that and that. But like the, then you find out they might be written in like fifth century BCE, fourth century BCE, and you're like, what? Like what? Well, wh how much time in between is there to Fudge alter that. stuff, yeah. change? You know what I mean? So that that's a that was a big deal learning about stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Textual criticism is a big thing. Absolutely, because it's still something that at the end of the day, you can't be overly confident about if we don't have firsthand yeah. accounts. We don't actually have the we have copies of copies of copies, and we know from people like Bart Ehrman and textual critics that there are issues even with the ones we have, and they there is no oh we know exactly the original text. Put your put this right here because I think when you like move it around it clicks which isn't good. like this yeah now it's better so i think that ultimately um we don't really know exactly what some of these texts said at the beginning right. we're not and we're not sure that by the time you get the copies if someone early on any of these manuscript traditions changed something because let me give you an example look at the new testament the earliest gospel mark there's certain things in the gospel mark that jesus supposedly says or are said in that gospel. Mark obviously is bringing in his own agenda right. into this gospel, writing a narrative about a secret Messiah right. that plays a perfect mythological origin story for the Christian movement, really. It, it's got this like really perfect origin narrative about this Christ guy, and it's, it's tragedy. He dies, the women were afraid, but they told no one. Okay, it ends on a tragedy. And Kellis is criticizing that. Kellis right. is like, you want me to believe that? Yeah, to someone to actually Kellis literally... is awesome, dude. You got to read Kellis's. But then, then once you once you get out of Mark and you see what Matthew did to it, and you're like, well, what the heck is going on here? And then you see Luke do it too, and then John, what the hell's going on? By the time you read John, you have to ask yourself, these are what we have. But if they're already doing that, then who's to say textual textual transmissions or any? Who knows? Right. What may have been said? What What do we have right now that we're so confident really goes back when it's centuries later? When we have a lot of these like credit card size, yeah, fragments that little, come up, little like pieces of ripped up weird paper. Yeah. And who knows if someone before that person had authorized, wrote it, and he was yeah. someone so impactful they just copied them. Who knows? I mean, there's That's a lot true. of stuff to really, and it's a wild, wild west reading Litwa and listening to what he's been saying in his books on finding Christianity or found Christianity. Well, he's, he's did so much on digging up the early Christian sects and denominations that you would never like, because a lot of those Carpocratian groups or Valentinians or Simonians that mm -hmm. he writes about and he wrote in his books, his latest book actually. A lot of those are just you hear them passing by in certain fragments, like uh, the, the hip the, the heresiologist might mention Carpocrates in one paragraph, right, here, right, and another person might mention them in the one paragraph there. So you, it's so little that you barely even know who they are. Mm -hmm. but he puts it all together in one spot. Boom! Right. Here's what the Carpocrates. Here's all the evidence for him. Here's everything we have. Here's what this person says. Now you have a whole picture of what they're doing. Right. And like that's that's like you gotta like you know give credit to that. There's a lot of stuff, man. The Carpocrations were like that, like literally like socialists. Mm. They had these little communities of like people who would give up all their belongings because it says it in the book of Acts. Right. They got it from the Bible. Whenever you, if you show up here and you want to be part of our cult, give all your belongings up to the, to the bishop or whatever, priest or whatever. 
and then you you're you're you are now like in common with us that's what makes me and i'm digging up something here that i think is interesting for the audience tell me if you think this is interesting we're talking about the poor yeah. we're talking about a communist type community with yeah, that, all things they share in common now here's the thing you go to the gospel of luke and it's all about the poor all about helping the poor. But Luke isn't poor. Whoever this author is, isn't poor. And they're not writing to somebody poor. Oh, great Theophilus, okay, the God lover. Right. They're writing to someone who's probably an elitist. Right. It's someone weird. who's got money and they're probably trying to convince them. Here are the true accounts. And of course, Shelly Matthews and other people I've interviewed like show you what they're doing. And they there's so much that they're doing. It's amazing to see this author, what he did. Yeah. But when Matthew gets the hold of these sayings of jesus when jesus says blessed are the poor right that's luke blessed are the poor it's almost like someone in matthew's you know uh author whoever this person is we'll just say matthew is writing and going i don't like that because you know jesus said to go and sell all that you have and follow me now blessed are the poor in spirit that's right in spirit they add this in spirit stuff and they don't have blessed are the poor. They have blessed are the poor in spirit, which takes away the things of like, you better sell all your shit, dude, and come yeah. and follow this cult. And they're going, no, 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 no. You, you can keep earthly goods. Yeah. It's about being poor in spirit, not about actually being poor. That's right. See, all he's you just already that one word. tweaking and reinterpreting the gospel message and the community of Christianity or the right. cr community of Christ followers. Christianity is a term that they like to say, is it an anachronistic term? Do you want to know something funny about that, though? Hmm. Van Loon is a writer from the 1930s who writes geography and history stuff. Now, the 1930s, think what's happening in that, on that time. Communism's big. You know, Germany is, like, on the rise. Mm -hmm. And it's really interesting to read writers from those time periods. You get, the, you get a glimpse of, like, the, what, what's going on. Like you, you can, like, like, see it in their writing. Of what's, anyways, he starts writing about Russia. And he's talking about communism. And the way he describes it in the 1930s is really strange because the first thing he says is communism is not new. He goes, as a matter of fact, communism comes from Christianity. Mm -hmm. He says there was com communal uh, cities throughout the Roman, uh, Roman um, Holy Roman Empire that lived communistic, got, had like communistic districts and governments. Mm -hmm. And there were Christian cities. And they, that's like he, he was making a claim. That it's I'm not originated. sure how true this is, but like he was basically saying, is, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I'm just saying what he said, that communism, the ideas of communism actually came from like Christian ideals. I don't know. Which is I mean, crazy to think about. It makes, I, I'm it, very, I mean, it is an X. Yeah. I have a hard time knowing that that would be the original is my point. Because, right. Because you can't say all, they all did that. Like you just made a good point because a lot of them will twist that. A lot of them don't want that. Yeah, but they, did, they did the that. idea originate with only a certain fraction? Maybe. I'm wondering where this group of saying all things in common got it from. Because did the Dead Sea Scroll also share things in common? I imagine they did. They it were might, in a communal lifestyle out there in Qumran. It might, it might be a natural thought process of trying to determine a, a lifestyle. Because think about yeah. it. Like I've, I've met kids that are, that are like, why can't we all just be uh, equal and just have the same amount of money? Like, like, like it's a natural, that just sounds right. Right, right, right. Even though some people don't like go through like the whole logistics of it. Why can't we just be poor in spirit? Though? Yeah, why can't we all just live in, like, <laughs> so like you can, you can see why people would come up with that idea. You right, know? right. That's what I, that's all I'm saying. Well, but no, you made a good point though. People twist it and say, blessed are the poor in spirit. That way they don't have to deal with all that stuff. Yeah, because it's just about, I mean, as long as you are being humble and poor in your spirit, that's what matters. It's not really being literally poor and i think maybe one of the christians saw that and was like yeah people are taking this stuff too literal man and we're, we're going bankrupt and we don't have any money in our community we need someone who's a big baller or or they themselves had the money and they weren't interested in selling all that they owned and coming to follow christ right so it makes you makes you wonder yeah <clears throat> um I'm trying to think of what else we do gotta probably wrap it up soon though yeah 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 Super chat your questions if you have any before we go because we're gonna wrap it up soon. Yeah, we have five more minutes left, and um, but um, you don't have to though. But hey, that'd be cool if you did. <laughs> but uh, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, I I really do wonder, like the time between, I don't know, Mark, and 
you know, their first Christians. What do you think they were like? If the you first? had like from the evidence you have, right? You, Derek Lambert, from the people you talk to, the first Christians. If you were to, if someone, if you, let's say you're sitting in a college class right now and you have, a, you're taking a test, mm-hmm. and on that cl- test is pl- try to explain in seventy five words what the Christians were, the first Christians before the Gospel of Mark was written, okay, were like. So this is tough because. First, the only the you can go earliest, off Paul. You can go off. Well, Paul. that's what I'm saying. That the that is what I'd have to go off. Yeah. Of. And I would have to say that the early Christians would have been non-Gentile focused. Would have been Jews, as Paula Fredrickson puts it, from Jews to Gentiles. Right. That Paul is that, and this is the hard part because Paul's letters are that pivot in the movement that goes from a Jewish only thing to Gentiles. You, because th- there is evidence of the Zebenites. Well, that's still, even then, I don't know, they may stem back. James Tabor yeah. thinks the Ebionites may actually precede Paul and go back. Yeah. And he's not even sure if Paul himself might have well, been one. some of the early Christians claim that, too. Like right. You, you see that in the writings of... Uh, but if you were asking me to describe Irenaeus, them, if Irenaeus you, says that the, hip, the, the Ebionites are from James. Right, right. Well, if... if then if they're from James, then James would be an Ebionite. Then therefore, the earliest Christians would have probably been Ebionites. Right. Um, but what would they have been like? That's the tough one because for a while, you know, we've had certain people come on who say that these are radical rebels that were fighting against I'm Rome. starting to not think that. I know. You're thinking the total opposite. I'm starting because, okay, I've been really getting into this, these pseudopigrapha texts. Mm-hmm. And these pseudopigrapha texts show a different side of Judaism. They're Greek they're, they're Greek speak they're Greek writers Platonic mm-hmm. Pythagorean Orphic there's even Orphic fragments in there there's Sibylline oracles that use a lot of some sometimes pagan sometimes Jewish imagery in there and I I'm actually starting to think that Christianity came out of that mm-hmm. because think about it why would it be so easy for Paul to take a movement that's Jewish and apocalyptic well I'm, I'm not saying it's not apocalyptic of course it's apocalyptic Right. But I'm saying more in the Platonic side, not the Jewish rebel side. Okay. Because for Paul to take a Jewish rebel movement and turn it into a Greek movement, it'd be damn it's, impossible. It's so radically different. You kind of have it's, to ask yourself. I'm not saying it's not, it couldn't happen, but I just don't, I see it as less likely than they're actually being like people like Philo or Aristobulus. Those could have been the real early Christians. There's a super chat. Have fun. Satan. Be safe. Thank you. Satan. Satan. Thank you. I've, you know, you've been Seriously. around for a while. It's always good seeing you in the chat. Thank you for that. Sue. Absolutely. Just keep it up there for a minute. Yeah. Um, give him some praise for helping me. Yeah. I, so, so I always do that. I'm always like, next, I even though there's nothing next. The, the interesting thing that you're bringing up, and I think this is a valid point you're saying here, is this. Is that we're realizing the dichotomy between like Jewish thinking and Jews and what they did and like what the pagan world did. We that's the it's a false dichotomy that we've created. Yeah, it really is. The more we're studying in the there's academics, a there's a blend going yeah. on where the cultures have fused, where we have Jews who are literally like trying to bend over backwards in synagogue inscriptions for the Gentiles and Gentiles that are bending over for Jews. And there's like a, a great collaboration that's taking place. Yeah. And so it's hard to really know. Wish I could have joined you. next Rob, year. Next year. Look, I think he's doing it in March. Oh, really? That soon? I think that's, they usually do it in March. The only reason we did it this time and this year is because of COVID. They oh. just opened everything back up recently. I think this is a good time to do it. This is amazing, man. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. It would be awesome if you ever went on a trip. When, You're when, in Australia, so it'd be like. It's very possible. It's very possible. Heck of a flight. Thank you for the super chat. Send yeah, no thank you. Just go subscribe to Set No Apologetics. Rob. I always call him Rob. Rob, Rob Rowe. Yeah, go subscribe to Rob. Oh, another one. Wow, you guys are pouring them in now. Thanks, Thanks for, for checking, checking in. in. Have a blessed. Thank you. Vaguely agnostic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're gonna I know you're on you're one of the uh, members on Patreon and you're gonna see some exclusive, good, well done content that's coming there. But if anyone's watching that can't afford Patreon, there'll be free stuff too. Yeah. And it's gonna be good too. We'll tease you to see. I'm same. just gonna do both because you know, pe- people who do pay and help support me, I have to give them stuff. You wouldn't but be I'm here not, right now. But I'm not. But yeah, exactly. But I also am not just going to neglect just just oh, only Patreon only. So you'll Listen, see, it'll be both. Don't be poor in spirit. Okay? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. Joel, thank you. Glad you weren't too. We tired. were last night. Last oh night my we gosh! Yeah. Yesterday I was dying. I woke up with a headache from a caffeine. I needed caffeine. Yeah. We got on. We got on the right track, and we're doing it here. 
Um, you asked me to describe Christianity yeah. earliest form. I would say Jewish. This is my thoughts. It, Jews only first. That didn't mean that God didn't have a plan for Gentiles, but like out the gate, as Paula describes it, and there are prophecies, I think Paul believes in his words. I trust that Paul's saying he really thinks he's living at the cusp of the edge of time. And he believes that in the latter days, the nations would come in, as the prophecies talk about, and they'd flow to Mount Zion. They'd ask the Jews to teach them their ways, etc. And some Jews, as Paula documents this in her book, um, believe that God would do it. So you don't have to go do it. You know, you just got to focus on God's people, Israel. Focus on the children of Israel, and then God will do the rest of the work. Paul, according to her, is like, hold up. The end hasn't happened yet. Jesus already resurrected. I'm living in the end times. This stuff's got to happen soon. And he thinks it's going to happen in his lifetime. So his mission is to go out and gather the nations. Mission to the Gentiles. If you look at him that way with that apocalyptic end, he thinks, I've got to bring Gentiles in. What right. makes this very interesting is his opponents are trying to convert or Judaize in a different right. way. Paul's Judaizing too, but it's like they're trying. He's trying to make them Jews. Whereas Paul's this, like, don't do it. This is what got me thinking about the Greek side a lot more, especially when I started getting into Philo and, and Aristobulus and those guys and the Orphic stuff. Mm -hmm. Who is Paul going to talk to? Because he's going to Anatolia. He's yeah. going to Greece and Macedonia. Mm -hmm. There's, there, there are Jews there. Yeah. Who are they? What are they like? They're Hellenized Paul? Jews all day long. I don't know how much Paul interacted with Jews in his mission. Acts talks about him going to synagogue after synagogue, and there might be right. A tradition but that's there, what but... I'm saying. That when he's going, because all if you if you read Mary Beard, yeah, Mary Beard lays it down that all over the Roman Empire there's Jewish communities. And there are, yeah. Paul's going to those people, but she describes she even describes those. These are Greek speaking Jews that are. Similar to like Philo. That's why I'm saying in they have, Acts. They have, they're a lot different than like the, the the Sadducees types of people. So the book of Acts that lays out they're like this, Pharisees. Well, here's what I'm getting at. The, the book of Acts is the only place you're getting that Paul continuously is going to synagogues. Right. That doesn't mean he wasn't because he gets whipped by synagogues. He says, I've been lashed so and so. So right. he has attended them. But how? where is he finding his Gentiles? Is he going to synagogues and finding God fearers that are God going fears. to Those them? are And there's, there, you can be. <clears throat> There, like a Gentile God fear. There, yeah, there were there were pagan God fears. Right, and that was more from the Orphic sect, the Pythagorean types. Like like Apollonius of Tiana would be considered that. Right, where he's not like a, you know, he's not going on the Bacchic frenzies. He's but he's like a pious, you know, I'm yeah. a very good pagan. Well, all you know that made I mean? it, all that makes a God fear a God fear is if they would come in, they could still worship their other gods. Right, but they came in and they honored and feared or showed love and reverence to the God of Israel. Right. And they could go there and then go to the temple of Addis and do whatever, because they were not converts and they were not Jews. I, I do think that Paul got his, his following. I don't know this with any certainty, but I think he got his following from God fearing communities that were in synagogues in the diaspora among out throughout the Roman empire. And as um, Paula Fredrickson sneak peek to the stuff that I have on my Patreon with her, she talks about if you look at his mission as it's described, he's doing kind of an upside down U. So where we are, right? We're right here near Israel, Jerusalem, right here in um, uh, what, what is the city here? Um, Nat Natalia. Natalia, yeah. Okay, he's a little north, of course, but he curves up around the Mediterranean Sea in the Roman Empire, heading west to Spain. So he's kind of going like, well. Is this a bad angle? This, this angle probably. I don't know. Either way, I'm going to go this way. So he's he's down here closer to, I guess you'd say, Jerusalem, heading up because he goes to Arabia when he gets converted. Like, not literally Arabia, but part of the Roman Empire, they said, right out there. Yeah. And then he curves up and goes towards Spain. And he goes so fast. I mean, it didn't take him too long to get through all of this. And right. he's like, hey, I got to end my mission. I'm heading to Spain. You got to ask yourself the question, like, he wasn't hitting every Gentile, every corner, every post, every no. building. He wasn't going to every Temple of Addis, every Temple of Athena. You know what I think temple. he was doing, though? I think he was going to the central places. The synagogue. Or the, the main places where those ideas were being, like where they had the scribes, where they had the, the main, mm -hmm. like, set, they called them ecclesia, 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 or how do you say that? Ecclesia. Ecclesia. ecclesia yeah. yeah, which means church or. A gathering. Yeah. But it's not just a church. But it's not just we a church. used to no, say their, that. No, their that? job in the Roman Empire was to bury the dead, was to do funeral services 
So right. it didn't matter where you were. And that's why the early Christian catacombs, there's pagans over here, mm -hmm. Christians over here. Like you'll see a Jesus uh, mosaic, right? an Orpheus mosaic right here. They were all, the, the, the church was one thing. Mm -hmm. And they just kind of, and eventually, eventually it converted into, like I'm talking like throughout past like hundreds and hundreds of years, eventually the Christianity wins out. You know, yeah, so Invictus did. Christianity are the last two. Well, it's like it. it's like the the lady um, that I interviewed about Egypt, the Egyptologist, um, uh, Carrie Kara Cooney. Uh, yeah, Cooney. She talks about how monotheism is the perfect political tool. Perfect. Yeah, and and it gives you absolute power. Yeah, and how you can control people through it. And it was one really church, one God. Yeah, it's the set way up like up what's below is is down here. It was so amazing how she described it. As above, it. so below. Yeah. But I imagine that that would be perfect when Constantine yeah. sees this and sees how it unites the communities. Yeah. Imagine on a grand scale how it would work. Right. For uh, needing a government set up. But yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, as far as I can tell, I think that it came, I think that what we call Christianity stemmed out from Hellenistic Judaism. And when Gentiles enter the movement, you, you, there's this like, I think there's a social issue going on between yeah. Gentiles being well, on equal plane with Jews, and Jews yeah. weren't having it. You know, Jews didn't like that. And but even when Christianity is taken off, you you still have that. They still have that. Um, because I'm the, what I'm getting at is Clement of Alexandria wrote the book called Exhortation to the Greeks, mm -hmm. and he's he's comparing Christianity to all these other movements, the Bacchic movement. He's calling there a bunch of frenzy alcoholics, the Orpheus movement. It's like, okay, Orpheus, all right, yeah, here's a figure who is a prophet. You know, he was a sinner. But Jesus is the new Orpheus. He's singing the song of salvation. Mm -hmm. and it was, but, like, he's going through and comparing Christianity to all these other groups because he's trying to win them over. Right. So that's still happening even in the time of Clement. Right. So I could, that's that, to me, is fascinating. How, it is. It, it, the, the apologetic yeah, work yeah, yeah. is... Rather than condemning it completely, there's kind of an incorporation. It's almost of it. like he he knows that this is something that people are taking serious, right? So he's gonna he's gonna yeah. That's why, like, I recently interviewed um, Shelley Matthews, and she was talking about how Luke Acts paints the wave, the paints the road to Constantine. And if you look at Matthew and Mark, they're not painting that road, like that road to Rome that that somehow is going to make Rome an empire, the kingdom of God, and this massive thing. Oh, uh -oh. Shoot. oh, the camera. Your camera. <laughs> well, I guess that's uh, that'll be it then. Well, there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, because I don't even have the other cord anyway. Do you not have an internal mic? Or internal oh, camera? yeah, I do. I do. Just, we can close it off like that. Yeah. That's what we'll do. We're going to edit this camera. Integrated camera. This, this camera's going to be to horrible. Woo! Hey, you! You over there, <laughs> where the sun shines. This is terrible, this camera. Right. But, um, yeah, let's close that out then. Yeah, let's Joel, you're right. We do have a closing sleep. prayer. <laughs> <laughs> right. Mizuzu. Oh, well. Tell we'll, them a word that you, oh, you, you, yeah, yeah. you learned a new word. But there's, there's, well, I already knew about it. I forgot what it was called. Yeah. I knew about it because I used to go to a um, Messianic Christian cult church that was. We can leave on a cliffhanger. Um, Find out what a Mizuzu is for tomorrow night's live. We could do that. Yes. Yeah. And uh, you have just attained true. Hold on, if I'm outro. No. 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 You have just attained true gnosis. The demiurge has no power over you.